is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the podcast. It has been a really long time since we had in-person guests in studio. And Rick, thank you for, for taking the time out of your day to do this, man. You were our last guest at in-person. You are our first guest back in person. That's crazy, right? Right? That's like yeah. we've all been through a really shitty time warp. Yeah, man. Right? It was the year that didn't exist for anybody. And it's right. been... And we, and I'm sure we'll talk about this in a little while, but I mean, don't want to make light of it because it's been devastating for yeah. everyone, right? Yeah. yeah. But damn, dude, it, it feels really legit good to start getting life back. It, it, it really, really does. does. And, yeah. and you know, we did mention it was February 2020 when we had you in wow. to talk about Midsummer Scream wow. 2020. Yeah. Uh, we did a whole giveaway and everything, yeah. you know, and then March just... That was the month when it just went all downhill for the world. The day the earth stood still, right? Exactly, yeah. 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 And it, it, it's just, it's good. To, it feels good to be back. Um, I'll, I'll put it out here, too. We're all vaccinated. Yeah. Uh, that way, if anyone wants to know, we're, yes, we are all vaccinated. Yeah. Um, so we're doing this. It's safe according to CDC and everything. We're doing it. We're not touching tongues. No, it's we're not. Okay. <laughs> not like right. last time. Right. Yeah. <laughs> that happened last time, and look what happened. So... Uh, but I'm excited. You're, we're, you and your team are doing something this summer. You're giving yeah. the Haunt fans something to look forward to. Yeah. Awaken the spirits. It, we're looking forward to it. And, and it, you know, first and foremost, and I'm going to say this a million times leading up to the show, anybody and everybody that is excited about Awaken the Spirits, when you see Gary Baker, give him props and thank him because yes. he is the one that really was the catalyst. I mean... We had decided, okay, well, obviously, it's not going to happen again. Right. It's devastating. Yeah. On emotionally, business-wise, just everything. It's, it, we couldn't believe that here we are again, having to cancel again. And we kind of just really just shifted our focus and our sights to season screamings. Right. Of course. And I didn't know, but between David Markland and Gary, Gary just kept needling David, saying... We can't not do anything. We have to do right. something. Yeah. And and it's so funny, you know, it's the forest or the trees situation. I don't know that it even it didn't dawn on any of us except Gary, I guess. Well, it doesn't have to be midsummer screen. Yeah. Right. You know? And literally it, it, it almost happened overnight where David really kind of looked at it and thought about it and Gary said, We we've gotta do we've gotta do something. Right. Yeah. And a weekend worked out at Pasadena, and we were already working with them on season screamings, and they said, well, we'd love to have you earlier, you know, whatever. Yeah. And literally, David texted me, and he goes, I'm thinking of these dates. What do you think? And I said, okay, that's two months, you know. Yeah. For, yeah. And All right. I said, if it makes sense, dude, I'm all in. Let's do it. Let's yeah, do it. Yeah. And I'm like, my head's spinning. Like, I literally, I, I woke up to the text and I'm like well shit I guess we're doing a show you know it's like <laughs> yeah. wow um, if you if you are a, a newcomer to creating events or whatever I would say trying to do something on any large scale <laughs> right that's like business suicide of course. so <laughs> yeah. with, with this team we've been together for so long and I mean in 2016 we started midsummer. We had about four months right. yeah. to create and execute, launch everything, and so we thought, okay, well, this is smaller, and and we do need to stress it. It's it's not midsummer screen. Right? Yeah, of course. It's smaller. Pasadena is a much much smaller footprint and venue than Long Beach, and so this is Awaken the Spirits presented by Midsummer Scream. It is our brand, right. and it will feel. You'll, it'll have the feels the of midsummer, right? Feel, yeah, and that's because of. You guys, the community. Right. I mean, that's right. when the community comes together. It could be in the middle of the Mojave in in a, in a desert, you know, right. and it would feel like midsummer because the community is what is the magic blue, yeah. right? right? So uh, the, the the footprint that we have at at Pasadena, literally everything that we're going to do, both for Awaken the Spirits and Season Screamings, could fit into the Hall of Shadows. Wow! At oh. midsummer, so wow. that's the scale difference okay. for us. That said, we're not resting on our laurels, and we are busting our asses at this point to make sure that we put on the best possible show in, in this amount of time that we can do for everybody. And I think everyone's going to be really excited. I, of course. Well, I mean, we are we're excited. excited. We're so, excited. Yeah. I mean, 
when yeah. when we got the, the you know we got the teaser the day before the announcement of just the question mark yeah you know the speculation started going nuts like oh midsummer they're probably gonna do something this year you know they're probably gonna yeah there's something gonna happen midsummer's announcing something and then the next day you know the following morning awaken the spirits gets announced and yeah i remember calling this guy immediately like hey by the way Thank you. That's my birthday weekend. So <laughs> well, happy birthday. That, that, that's that's perfect. Uh, my go. birthday is that Friday, and then that weekend I'm just gonna have a great time at Awaken the Spirits. But I immediately called him. I'm like, you're gonna have, you're gonna want to come out on my birthday because Midsummer Scream is doing Awaken the Spirits, and we have to go. It's great. So yeah, that's uh, really really we're great. Already, we, we already got the tickets. We're we're super stoked. Fantastic. Uh, we got the VIP because there's I no, there's I, no I, no I, I personally think, VIP. I yeah, personally the VIP because VIP. VIP. Right? There's no other way to go when you go yeah. to these events. You got to get the VIP. Yeah. Man, there's yeah, so yeah. much uh, amazing uh, little goodies that come with it. Yeah, um, we want to stand in line, didn't we? Yeah, you, you get the VIP <laughs> and stuff. So we, we cannot be more excited about this event. I am very much looking forward to it, and I cannot Great. wait to to burn my wallet too because Dude, that's what I'm going It's going to be fun, and you know, we're we're bringing in a lot of vendors. We've got well over 200 vendors. Nice. And um, we we don't have, and and I know people are going to. This may be one of the questions. Um, there is no darkened hall. Okay. At, at this event, right. there will be a darkened hall at Season Screaming. Okay, and that's going to be the Hall of Yuletide Spirits. I love it. Ooh. Okay, so that will be like a mini version of the Hall of Shadows. I love yeah. the play on words. Um, I love we it. just so time number one, not really a, ma a matter of space, but time because what the hunters do in Hall of Spirits takes a lot of time to to, yeah. to set up. Right. And now, unfortunately, what we're finding out with the home hunters in in the community is that COVID is just that freaking gift that keeps on giving. Yeah. Now they're going to Home Depot or Lowe's to buy their material, and they're finding that wood is like 600% more. Yeah. And so now we're hearing there's a lot of home haunts that are like, well, we, we're probably not going to do anything this year. Can't afford it, yeah. So it really, the ramifications are still trickling down, and it's been devastating. Especially because a lot of home haunts, too, they don't charge. Right. A lot of them it's will, a labor will, of love. They'll, they'll right? do it for free because they just love the community so much. They love yeah. Halloween that they yeah. want to just put on a good show for everyone. Absolutely. So so that was another thing. And it's like you, you don't plan an event and, 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 and tell haunters, okay, you got two months yeah. to come up with something. I mean, that's just not the way that we work. Right. Well, and we're not going to present anything to the public that's A, going to make the haunters look bad, of right. or B, make our brand look bad. Yeah. Right. So people know that when we have a darkened hall, it's going to be great when they step in through that portal, right? Yeah. So we do have season screamings. We'll have one. Cal Haunts is already working on the entryway. Nice. Of course, nice. It's going to be fantastic. And that's all I'm going to say about that for it's right now. It's a little now. teaser. You get a little, little, teaser. little something right. just to little, keep it going. Little, little something, something. So uh, obviously follow yeah. you guys on Instagram to keep up with more uh, updates. Oh, yeah, all of our socials. When, yeah. when it gets closer to the event, um, they'll, they'll update more on uh, you know vendors and whatnot of yeah. what's going to be there. So just keep in uh, mind with Midsummer Scream on social media. So Yeah, absolutely. And we, we'll be making more announcements. Uh, it's funny because I'm used to saying we're going to make more announcements in the weeks and months ahead. Yeah. We ain't got months ahead. <laughs> yeah. So in the days and weeks ahead, we yeah, will right. be making more exciting announcements about Awaken the Spirits. Awesome. But it's just, you know, and it's one of these things where I was naming the, the thing with, with David and was really important. Really important. It was very, very <laughs> important. Important. It was very important that we put an exclamation mark at the end of Awaken the Spirits because it goes at that point from being a title or a name to a call of action, right? Of right, and so of course it's we're we're dealing with that on multiple levels. Number one, everyone in the community is like, "That's a haunted mansion thing," you know, yeah. wake in the spirits. But it's also the fact that we've all been under this mandatory slumber for the last year and a half. Right. So this is the first live, big scale live event that Midsummer's produced in like two years, you know, yeah. that we've had. Yeah. And so it really was a call to action, awaken the spirits. Exactly. And uh, we, we couldn't be more excited about it. Oh, man. Yeah. I mean, last year, thankfully, we were we were blessed with the live stream. And that was just right. a little bit of, you know, uh, yeah. nutrition for us haunters mm -hmm. and the haunt community to, to still carry on. But as soon as yeah. Tony had given me that call, like, hey, bro, you're coming out my birthday weekend. You gotta yeah. make sure it works for your schedule. I was like, let me get off work. Let me see what flights are yeah. costing. 
let me send you the money to buy the tickets. Like, let's That's get great. I, I was up, I, I think, that day when tickets went on sale. Because uh, the, the announcement was, like, on what was it, like a Tuesday or a Wednesday, right? We announced on, let's say, Tuesday, and Tuesday. tickets went on sale. Like, yeah, it was Tuesday because that's when California reopened right. the economy, and we, we timed it to coincide with that. Right. And then the next day, the tickets went on sale. Yeah, I yeah. was I was up at um, I had woken up for work at around five thirty, so I was already up for work. I had just I told my my boss and everybody when I come in, listen, like nine ten o'clock comes around i gotta like i gotta be on my phone first for a little bit because these tickets are going on sale i cannot miss them like i, I need to get them i need to, i need to go to this thing and they're like all right so we'll, we'll take lunch around that time i was like all right cool yeah. so around that time came and i'm waiting and waiting finally they went on sale and he texts me the minute because we 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 have all the notifications on for social media and everything just sure. so when you guys announce everything sure and he texts me he goes tickets are on sale go buy them now and i was like say less and so yeah, he already sent me the yeah. money and i had the money and we were good to go that's great we appreciate so, the support oh, anytime and it will it will sell out because the capacity yeah. is all, again because of venue just just literally the yeah. only reason is because of the venue size right. yeah capacity is a fraction of what it is at long beach right so this show will sell out and, and i know the last time you were on the show too you you said you like to sell enough tickets for where everyone feels comfortable yeah you're not shoulder to shoulder yeah, and yeah. whatnot so i that taking that into mind with buying the tickets as well is a huge like kind of you know sigh of relief too because a lot of conventions will go until they can't fit anybody and that's no fun it's no that's fun no at all because then you can't get into any vendors it's hard to get into vendors it's harder to get to yeah. the panels and with you guys taking that step of we're gonna make it so we sell enough tickets where it's a good amount of crowd but everyone's comfortable while they're there yeah and i, I really appreciate that especially during the time we've had in the last year yeah i think still people even though the vaccines are going the world's getting a little bit better I think still people still have that, you know, in the in the back of their mind of just the whole being around. But yeah, I, I do appreciate that that aspect of it because it makes me feel a lot safer. Yeah, totally. I mean, it, it's always with us. What's what's the experience? Right. Right. It's not like how many warm bodies do we need to make X amount of profit. It's literally what is the best experience right. for yeah, guests. Yeah. And so we we're very careful with planning. Aisle size is a big thing. Uh, how many bodies we have in any given hall is is a big thing. Right. And so it, it is. It is all done. Uh, master plan. You know that from. I mean, we worry about you guys. It may not seem like it when the sun's beating down and you're standing in line, but we worry months in advance. Like, how long are people going to have to wait? You right. know, in the sun, and how do we like get people to move in here? Because the worst thing to do is go to a convention. And you see people waiting two hours just to get in to San the convention Diego. outside. <laughs> San Diego Comic Con. And it's just really, it, it, it's bad. And it's just yeah. sometimes it's out of planner's control. A lot of the times it's just poor execution. Yeah. It's just the way it is. And we try, I mean, our, our white bat team, I think we've gotten pretty damn good at wristbanding people ahead of time. Oh, yeah. We obviously have challenges. I mean, and, and there right. will be challenges for this and for our Christmas show. Right. But we, we try to preemptively strike out what, what we know that we have control of. Right. Yeah. So if it's a matter of really focusing a lot of our firepower staff-wise on, on ticketing everybody before they go in, I mean, on wristbanding before they go in, well, then that's what we're going to do. Right. Yeah. And then reroute those those white bats elsewhere once we have no line outside. Because yeah. me and Sammy have done, I mean, in the past with Midsummer Scream, I mean, we got there, and we always suggest for people to, to arrive uh, early so you can catch parking, um, yeah, yeah. And, and, you know, you can get a good spot in line. But yeah. even waiting in the line, I mean, you know, before actual opening of the doors, when the doors do open, you guys have a good job of executing it where the line moves pretty quick to get inside. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, if you if you if anyone's familiar with, the, of course, Long Beach Convention Center, they have that big bridge that kind of goes to, like, the... Like, Tijuana. Yeah. It goes yeah, to like the line does. goes forever. It goes right. down. And you're at the hotel the and it's like, holy crap, it's like I've, everyone's here. I've even seen it go down onto the sidewalk, you down know. Down by the water. The, yeah, down by yeah. The, the little lake right there. And, um, but you guys execute it so well that everyone gets in. It doesn't take a long time to get in. It's important to us. Yeah. And, and we are, you know, every year at every event, people will complain about that. And we're painfully aware. Yeah. yeah. I mean, while we're sweating blood inside making sure that everything's ready to open for you guys on right. time 
we are well aware that you guys are sweating, <laughs> waiting outside. outside. Yeah. Come in. We're all sweating. We're all on the same team. Mm -hmm. We're all we're all in this together. So yeah, right now we are focusing on where are we going to route the queue to get people inside. Right. And then also now it's when they are inside, where are we going to have the queues for like the presentation stage? Where are we going to route this and that? And it's a science, and it's something that we constantly tweak and work at. Yeah. But I do want everybody to know that that is something that we do take very seriously, because none none of us wants to wait in the sun. Right. None of us likes to wait to get into anything. So we're we're with you, and and yeah. just bear with us because oh, yeah. this is our first time doing something at Pasadena yeah. since we were Scare LA. Right. Yeah. And so it's been a minute. So we just we're. We're planning the best thing we can. It's all about learning and just and executing it, what you yeah, can. Just, yeah, just we're we're all in this together. We were gonna get you in. We're yeah. gonna get yeah. you in. As Everyone's fast as getting in, man. That's Everyone's it. gonna have a good time. Yeah. I think the biggest thing to take out of this too is the community, as a whole, will be back. Yes. And and better than ever. We've um, missed everybody so much. Yeah. yeah. I mean, with yeah. you guys obviously having to you know postponing Midsummer Scream for 2022 now with yeah. the Long Beach Convention Center. And then you guys coming out with this event to still give the fans something before haunt season. Yeah, yeah. Yes. It, it's it's. I, I like to kind of always call it too a, a more smaller midsummer scream in a way. Well, it's it, and it's like it's the fun size. Yeah, right? it's, it's midsummer a, yeah. fun size. It's so yeah, you get the little like, candy with yeah, the fun yeah. size, you know. Yeah. But it, it's still gonna. I, I I have no doubt in my mind. You guys put on. We've we've gone to midsummer scream two years, and we've had a blast. So I I don't. No doubt in my mind that this won't be the same. It's going to be yeah. a blast. It's going to be all the time. It's going to be a lot of fun. I mean, the vendors are fantastic. Right. You know, again, the fans, the community, second to none. Yeah. That's where the magic is, really. Of course. And you know what? We're Gary and and you know the Call Brothers, which is you know Jim Call and Gary Baker. They're they're going to do a really fantastic presentation stage nice. that's going to probably be on par with what we have at Midsummer Scream. Yeah. So you can confirm we're going to have panels now. We are going to have presentations. I'm excited. And it's going to seat about 1,300-ish people okay. in the presentation room. The one in Long Beach is about 2,000-plus, right maybe up. a little bit more. So it'll still be sizable. It's going right to be up. a sizable room. And we haven't announced what we're going to have, but we we are going to have partnerships. Well, we have annou well, we've announced that... With, um, Hayride's going to be there. I know um, that. So 13th floor is yeah, going to be there floor. with with Hayride and Delusion. Right. Right. Um, Winchester Mystery House. Yes. We confirmed that. Yeah. Trying to think what we've confirmed and what we haven't confirmed. <laughs> Someone pull up the site real there quick. There you go. <laughs> but I mean, so, yes, we will have familiar faces and yes. dear friends there with us. And uh, people that are wanting to have information about this year right. will not be disappointed. Oh, well, I, I don't. Um, it's been a very dry summer so yeah. far. And uh, and I can only imagine that there's, I think the main focus right now for the haunts is just to to send out the rehires, to yeah. to get everyone rehired, get everyone hired first before fitting of the costume before they go full force yeah. announced. But yeah. I, I could tell between me and Sammy, I mean, last year's haunt season, you know, it was, I, I still had a lot of fun yeah. for what it was, and I appreciated still getting stuff uh, during the tough time. Um, but it just it didn't feel the same at some point. It was rough. It was yeah. rough. Halloween was um, really, really rough so last we, year. So we owe it to the home haunters, though, because oh. they really stepped up Save last the day. year. They yeah. stepped it up big time. The home haunts for the win. The, you know, we had a couple of walkthroughs, and a lot of them were displays, but the displays were second to none. Yep. Um, and we had a, a hayride through on the drive-in, which was a lot of fun. Yep. Um, uh, we had a bunch of other little drive through haunts that were a lot of fun, little like drive in style yep. themes. You know, a lot of fun stuff. We to did get several creative. of those, yeah. Yeah. A lot of creativity. Which yeah. is what I said, which I, which I really commemorate and, and thank them for. It. Okay, we have an issue. Doesn't mean we can't get over that issue, yeah. get yeah. over that barrier. Yeah. So yeah. we'll put on a car wash, we'll put on a drive in event, we'll make sure you're socially distanced, we'll make sure everyone's safe. Yeah. Um, but we're still going to give you as much as we can of a haunt season. Yeah. Which yeah. I mean, I was very thankful for. Um, and you know, being able to, you know, although I was out of state, being able to see people's videos and um, watching people's pictures and updates on social media, it was yeah, really cool to see everyone, you know, really rally behind the home haunt. Yeah. Oh yeah, um, to, to you know, show them the love that they obviously deserve. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've heard me speak about it before. You know, it doesn't matter whether you are John Murdy or John Cook. Yeah, it, it all starts at home. Yeah, exactly. Right. So the home haunts that we see, especially the younger home haunters, right. That's the most exciting because that's your crystal ball, dude. You're, the you're next seeing, yeah. you're seeing literally 
the next gen being born yeah. at home, right? So with without the home haunters, you're not going to have the continuation of Scary Farm or Horror Nights or whatever because people have to take those reins yeah. at some point. Yeah. And so we're seeing them right now with these well, home haunters. It's very exciting. A good example of that too, uh, Corona Haunt Pirates Cave. Yeah, wonderful. Pirates, Pirates Cave, it's Both a father's beautiful. son. Both and then, beautiful. You know, the yep. Son's coming up right now. Uh, Jacob, good friend of ours. Yep. Um, they're great. Corona Haunt. They're in their you know mid early twenties. They're they're all wonderful. They're coming yes. up. So uh, Drex yeah. Society, you know, they're all love them. Yeah, they all these amazing home haunts. You know, they're all coming up, and like you said, it's the next generation. You know, they it could is. be the next John Murdy. They could be the next John Cook. You know, yep. to, to take over the industry and, and revolutionize it. Or bigger and better. Bigger and better. Yeah. Their their, their knowledge is going to be more at that point. You yeah. know, yeah. like. Imagine if John Cook or John Murdy, it's the John Show. The John um, Show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> imagine if they had the tools at their disposal right. yeah. early on that this generation of young exactly. haunters has. I mean, if you don't know how to do something, shit, you just pull up YouTube, YouTube and yeah, you got literally. 20 videos that show you how to do it. for anything right? now. So, I mean, this generation of young haunters is so far ahead of the game right. that ever before... That it's just it's mind blowing, right? And the yeah. things that they're going to do, literally, the sky is the limit, and that's what's exactly. so incredibly exciting for me. Right? Yeah, yeah. I, I I agree 100. percent These these home haunts killed it last year, man. Yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah, it really was. So, uh, looking into uh, Awaken the Spirits, what yeah. kind of vendors can we expect to, to see on the show floor? I think a lot of your favorite vendors that you've seen at Midsummer Scream. Right. I mean. David Markland is the one that really kind of curates cur curates that um, list, and and maintains those relationships. Right. Yeah, sure. And I mean, I know enough about that that the minute the minute David says, "So hey," most people go, "Yeah, yeah. yes." <laughs> so I, I, it, you know, I, I won't say that that's challenging. I, I think the challenging uh, part for him is to kind of figure out in a venue where we can't just say yes to everybody yeah. right is to kind of pare it down trim it down and say yes 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 maybe not this time that's got to be challenging for him yeah because we love all of our vending partners right and so the challenge is to create a wide enough swath of stuff yeah so that it's not 200 people selling the same shirt right yeah. it's not 200 people selling the same Funko Pop, right? Yeah. So that's that's the challenge that he faces right. big time with the vendors. But that said, no shortage. Right. The minute the minute people hear the Midsummer's going to have a show, the vendors are very excited about it. Oh yeah. And, and that's and, something that we're very proud of. Yeah. Because again, without people coming to participate, we don't have a show. Right. So we we are very fortunate that we have such a great relationship with so many vendors and we we couldn't advocate that more on the channel of, of a lot of the vendors to always go buy for them because a lot of the, these people are small yeah. businesses yeah and we got to support our small businesses uh, a lot of these people probably do this full time um so when when awaken the spirits come come with a nice uh, full wallet ready to go because I, I can guarantee you you're gonna have a lot of great uh, a lot of good homemade goodies that a lot of people yeah. make that yeah. are always fantastic um yeah. but like you said you know you got the t-shirts the funko pops the masks you know all these you know amazing vendors who either work in the haunt industry or just fans like us in the haunt yeah. industry you know they just you know they make all these amazing things for us to collect so or a lot of these guys yeah. you know to build on what you said yeah a lot of these guys didn't have any shows right yeah for a year at least a year plus exactly so trying to get by these like guys Etsy have, and stuff dude you know? these guys have just taken it on the on the chin yeah of so hard yeah yeah so it, it really really feels good to be able to open doors and say you guys are going to help us out hopefully we're going to help, help you out. out yeah and so it's beneficial on, on on both ends because we know i mean we're acutely aware we all personally have really had a rough year and a half yeah yeah and so we we know that everyone's in the same boat whether and it was boy, Financially, whatever it was, like something you know, personally, All the above. Yeah, yeah, everything you know, financial, emotional, everything, mental. Emotional, I mean, yeah. every, everything. It took a toll on everyone, especially yep. um, you know, my sister uh, did the whole year homeschooled, and uh, oh, I could tell God. you know, she's, for kids. I mean, she she already kind of has depression and stuff. So Disaster for kids. Yeah, it's yeah. It, it was a big thing, you know. A mess. And, so I'm hoping uh, you, we're here for where I work. We're here and we're gonna open up 100, percent which makes me happy. Yes. You know, a lot of the seniors who were kind of snubbed out of senior activities yes. and you know, sports and, 
and whatnot, all extra yep. extracurricular activities, you know, seeing life return to normal, it's just, it's it's very heartwarming. My daughter lost her entire senior year in high school. Yeah. yeah. No, no prom, mm, no, no graduation. Grad no grad night. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Grad night, scrap, yeah. no senior moments. Yeah. You can't, you know, and it sucks crazy. for, it's you really know, crazy. I, I feel a, a really bad for these kids because they work their asses off. Yep. You know, the entire time they're in school to, to walk down graduation. Get the handshake. Get the handshake at yep. the diploma, you know? And, and, and college also. Yeah. yeah. College grant. People have worked for years on their degrees. And that's coming out of their money, too. And they get yeah. zero yeah. gratification, you know, except for, yeah. well, we'll send it to you. Yeah. You, you know, that's their thank yeah. you, goodbye. Yeah. So, so everybody, but the education has it, just been a disaster. It all, it all ties into to Midsummer Screaming and Awaken the Spirits. It's, just, it's, like a, it's like a homecoming for the haunt community. For we this get, community, it is. We yeah. haven't done an event to this capacity in a very long time. Yeah. And to now that we're, we're getting better in California, you know, with the vaccines going out and, and people being safe and, and taking the necessary precautions, yeah. we can do something like this again. We can yeah. come back together and, and celebrate as a big... I've always... It's a community, but it's more of a family, too. Yeah. We're all one big family that just loves horror. Yeah. We, we love Absolutely. haunts. We, we love... We love all the, the goodies that these vendors bring out, and, and we just love hanging. It's, it's a good way to kind of, it's like a little family reunion, you know? You yeah, have to come sure. back and see everybody again. Totally. So it feels, I, I am, I, I'm literally counting down the days for it. Yeah. Like, but another event you're doing that's coming a lot sooner than this one, uh, the film festival. Yeah. You know, David Markland has worked very hard with Norm Gidney at Horror Buzz. Right. And they put together a really great event at the Frida. Yeah. And it's going to be fun. Yeah. It's also David Markland's birthday weekend. Nice. So be sure you wish him happy birthday. Happy birthday, When yes. you see him there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're going to, I mean, all of us will be there at some point. Right. Um, probably, I know that David wants us all to be there together to announce, like, who the winners are. Yeah. Right. Of the film, right, of the film, right, right. the films. So we will, we will probably all be there for that. So definitely say hi to us. Maybe fist bumps are, are better than anything yeah. else. Yeah, but yeah. fist bumps fist at this bumps point. Fist bumps are good, yeah. Fist bumps are good. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's going to be a great time. Yeah. And I know that they, you know, Norm's worked at, at curating all these things and, and the team, we're, we're all watching the, the movies and, and, and judging them and, and picking our favorites. And so that they're all, thing. they're so, all fan made films. Though, so yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So it's going to be a really fun time. And the Frida, they're always a great partner. Oh yes. You know, they're, they're a great partner with us. They have been now for, for they, several uh, years. They helped us, they helped us get over COVID. They did a lot of cool live streams yeah. over, over the, the time, uh, you know, during the pandemic with a lot of great reunions and, yep. you know, they, one of the, my favorite ones they did was with the Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Yeah, yeah. That was a lot of fun, dude. And, and that's one of my favorite films. So nice to see everyone come back and reminisce and everything. It was really yeah. cool. But I'm excited. I mean, I'm a, I mean, me and Sammy are huge film buffs. So yeah, right. I, I, I cannot wait to see the turnout for this and, and hopefully this happens uh, if this does good let's, let's hopefully it happens for years to come yeah no yeah. Th this is you know it was it was, it was spawned from not having midsummer right. again right but it, it, and it is actually it's i think this is the first the film festival that that will be the first midsummer event yeah. in about two years yeah, yeah. so it's, it's a big deal for yeah, us yeah. all to kind of get together again yeah, and yeah. do that but really i mean the huge props go to david and to norm for really like taking the reins on that right. project and, and pushing it forward. So, I mean, it should be, be fun. Be a nice, fun time. So grab your popcorn, grab your drinks. Yep. Get ready for a full uh, weekend of films because it's going to be a good time. Be fun. Be a good time. What do you think, Sammy? Yeah, no, I, I agree. It's going to be a good time. I think tickets are still available last I saw. So that's uh, July okay. 10th and 11th. Yep. Um, so get those tickets as soon as you can. Because they're going to sell out. They're probably going to sell out. Same yeah. thing for Awaken the Spirits. Get those tickets. I said it's going to be limited capacity. Right. Yep. Tickets are still available. Yep. But get them because they are like. They will they, 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 are, they, they will sell out. I was talking yep. to Rick. He's like, you know, make sure you guys have your tickets because this event is going to it's sell out. It's going to sell out. It yeah. always do. It always do in Midsummer, man. They always yeah. put on great. I've always said Midsummer is like the Comic Con for horror. It we really appreciate is. that. Thank it you. It really is. No, this is, this is the. I, this is, I think, the biggest horror convention in SoCal. Honestly, that makes it the world then, because there's yeah, none bigger, right? Exactly. So we we say that we're the biggest Halloween and horror convention in the world. I agree, yeah. and yeah. and and that's and people say, well, how do you know? And it's like, well, <laughs> you tell me the late the last time you saw a massive Halloween and horror convention in right. Kentucky. Yeah. yeah, I mean, they they just it doesn't happen, right? Yeah. Now, here's a an interesting thing, and I don't know if you guys ever thought about it. Have you guys ever thought about maybe taking it on the road? Sure. Yeah. 
that's come up and we certainly have people always say well I wish you'd come to Florida or you know that type of thing the bottom line is Midsummer Scream is one of those lightning in the bottle situations where it could be mounted anywhere else yeah. right but the magic and the reason it exists in the first place is because the SoCal yeah. hunt community yes. is so strong yeah. and so varied, right? Yeah. We can go to Indiana. Yeah, of course. Most of those people probably haven't heard of Not Scary Farm. Yes. Yeah. Most have maybe heard of Horror Nights, maybe. Yeah. yeah. So what are your main presentations going to be? Right. You yeah. know, do you have haunt at Indiana Beach. I mean, I, I, you know, I don't know what the events are there right. yeah. that draw thousands and thousands of eager fans. Yeah, your next it's, biggest It's thing, really, yeah. it's, it's a Southern California thing. Yeah. Now, it could work in Florida if it was a Halloween Horror Nights Fest. Exactly. Right? But they don't have the, the multiple, multiple big attractions like, we, like do, we, yeah. you know, the, yeah. that we do here. So, again, it's one of those things where it happened here in Southern California, right. not by accident, yes. by design. And while, yes, we could probably have a pretty good horror show right. anywhere else, this is Midsummer Scream. Yes. Yeah. This, and we say this is the home of Halloween, and, you know? You know, it's funny you bring up Florida and stuff, because have, we have a lot of uh, awesome YouTubers that, that are that some of our friends that live out in Florida. Sure. Um, and it, it blows their mind away when they when they hear about home haunts. Yeah. Because they don't do them out there because of, you know, weather and whatnot, but... Very few anywhere. Yeah, right? it, yeah. it blows their mind when they see a lot of the home haunts that we put out here in of South, course. You know, Southern California. Yeah. And they are just blown away because they want to go through some of these. They don't get a lot of... Like you said, Orlando is mostly famous for Halloween Horror Nights and Hallow Scream out there. Yep. You know what I mean? And so they, they really only have the two to go to. Yeah. And so we, we're fortunate enough to have multiple theme parks that host multiple events on yeah. top of home haunts. Yeah. So we get we get a really good uh, selection as to what to do, you know. And you know, to a large part, the industry was born here in Buena Park. Yes. Yes. Not Scary Farm. Yes. Right. The history of sliding Whereas goes back you, here. You, know? you go to an event at you know, Tampa has Hallow Scream, you go there and there are sliders and everything, but like maybe one percent of the guests that go there understand that that originated right here yeah. in Buena Park. Yeah, yeah. You know, people just don't know that. Yeah, they yeah. don't. They don't think like that. And so, no, the the alchemy is different. It is right. You yeah. could you could mount a show elsewhere, but you would not have the components uh, yeah, that, that we have here. And that's what makes Midsummer so special. Yeah, it's because a, of the yeah. location where we are. No, yeah, Long Beach. I think is a, a, a great center point for everything too. Yeah. You know, you have everyone that can come meet in the center and yep. just kind of put on the show um but also pasadena you know with doing this is a, is a pretty good center point too because yep. you know everything's right there as well i mean you're you're down the way from universal you're down the way from six flags you're yep. down you know up the freeway from knots um so you have all these amazing haunts coming out you yep. know 13th floor they're pretty much <laughs> everywhere yep. so you know yep. they, you know um and six flags you mentioned six flags yeah. actually they were they were like the first to say yes, yes, we want to be part of. Oh, great! So, Good. so they will be there. Awesome. And talk Six to talk months. about Fright Fest yes. and what they're oh, doing. Good. So, yes. Good. Because uh, I, you know, I hit up one of my friends who who works Fright Fest. I'm like, have you heard anything? Like, I'm hoping yeah. they do the event. I've never, I've never actually gotten the chance to go. It's, so I it's fun. really want to check it out. Yeah. You know. So I'm glad that they're going to be hopefully announcing some major stuff, man. Because yeah, we need our haunts back. We do. We do, and I think that we are. I, I really do. Unless God, knock on wood, unless something horrifying and cataclysmic happens i think that we are knocking on wood on that's that right one. yeah I, I think that we are on track for probably what will be the best halloween season in decades yes. I, I i completely agree um i i think uh the monsters and scare actors are going to be coming with so much energy yeah i told tony this that i wish i could be at not to um a pending event obviously but big thing pending event uh they're opening scare scare money right here because I know it's going to be electric, yeah. watching those uh, ghost town monsters coming down. Yeah. Um, the fog alley. And I'm Emotional. Probably, yeah. I'll, I'll, probably, I'll probably cry. Emotional. Yeah, I'll yeah. Cry. No. They'll be crying. You guys It'll will be, be crying. crying. Everybody's going to be crying. Like, and it's not it's even crying of sadness. Right? It's the crying of just happiness. Just to, the <laughs> fact that we didn't think we were going to see this. You know, I mean, we knew we were going to see it one day, but we didn't think it was going to be this soon. And now we're finally seeing it. And it's like, it's just a mix of emotions. Yeah. I think for any 
anything normal this year yeah. is going to be very emotional yeah. for fans. Because, I mean, <laughs> you know, we, we, we've yeah. all been in timeout. Right. We've been all we've been put in timeout for something that none of us did. Right. Yeah. Right. So mm-hmm. I think there is a lot, a lot that's going to be going on in, yeah. in our minds at, at, at those moments. Right. right. And uh, I, I think it's wonderful. It's it, it's it's going to be beautiful this year. Yeah. Halloween. I mean, look, I was emotional when the movie theaters opened up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah. I'm a huge movie guy, so just to, just to see things on the big screen again, I was emotional. So I can only imagine what going back to a Midsummer Scream event is going to be like, and going back to freaking yeah. Cons, you know, I just oh god, it's going to be really emotional for us to open the doors and so see if, you guys if coming you, in. I, if you, you guys, know? you know, I know you guys do your, you know, usually are famous for doing your, you know, your opening remarks, your ending remarks, yeah. And I love hearing those because yeah. you guys, you could tell the love and passion for the community. Yeah, it's not scripted; it's all raw. It's right there, and I can Correct. feel that, and I and I can't wait to. Hear maybe the sniffles and the and the everything because yeah, it's going to yeah. be an emotional time. We didn't, you know, we didn't think we we're going to come back this early, and and thankfully with with science and vaccines and whatnot, we yeah. were able to. So, it's, I, I just can it can it be August already? Like I'm ready. For it's it. coming. Yeah. It's yeah. coming. It's barreling down on us like a train. Yeah. But I mean, it will be, and it's going to be very emotional for us. Yeah. Um, we haven't even discussed if we're going to have an opening moment on stage. I like really that. hope so. That's the one thing I look forward to from you guys. But I if you guys that. did I, it, I but appreciate that. Yeah, you know, we haven't even we we literally haven't discussed that. Yeah. Um, if we don't have that, I'm just gonna put this out there. If we don't do that, it's probably because Markland or or, or Claire or somebody is like really focused on getting something else well, up and running right. there. Um, also. Because, and I, we're going to be able to talk to people and say hi to everybody, and right. I, I could imagine that it, it could happen as well. Literally, we haven't discussed this yeah. at all. Um, we don't want everything to feel like Midsummer so, Scream, right? Right? Yeah, yeah. So, regardless of whether we do do a, a, a team welcome to everyone, right. which I always think is nice. Yeah. yeah. To me, that's always very important. I think it's a very nice. Uh, button on top of everything to well, really kick that, things off and end yeah, things, you right? Yeah, you see that at a lot of conventions, though, and I, and I like to, to and to meet we appreciate the who that, run and it. we know that. Yeah, yeah. I, I like to see the I like to see the people who run it, meet, you know, get to meet them, and yeah. just know, our, you know, the we're in good hands. You yeah, know what I mean, so so whether we do it or not this time, I'm sure that we will do it. Of course, next summer in Long Beach. Oh yeah. yeah. That's going to be a huge one That's for us. That'll be, be our fifth anniversary, finally. Yeah, finally. <laughs> you know, the, Five years. The, you know, the fifth anniversary, seven years in the making, you know, yeah. whatever. <laughs> but uh, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be great. And so, yes, no matter when we address the crowd, right. both times, one time, whenever, it's going to be emotional. Yeah. yeah. Because it's been hard, like I said, it's been very hard for us personally and right. professionally. And we know mm-hmm. that everybody has struggled. And, and it's really been just heart-wrenching to see online just all the struggles and and how much pain and strife the pandemic has caused you know just when you guys did uh, awaken the spirits i i saw the community i read the comments i i saw the story post people were excited for this yeah and you could tell that it 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 was like you said people were put on time out for no reason and now we're all robbed everybody was robbed yeah you know so it's just been when, when, just to see the excitement in the community and just to see everyone was ready to go like, yeah. it just makes me happy you know yeah. what I mean Like it, I, 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 I'm happy with everyone because we finally get to be together and we finally get to you know have a good time yeah. and you know spend gotta, some money have some good I, time I gotta there. reiterate with you guys because um, I, I want to uh, you guys always keep it very real and I want to be very real with you guys right when I say that we were robbed I'm not talking about oh we didn't get to have our convention or whatever I mean People, real people, good people, lost their livelihoods. Yeah. Many of us lost people that were very near and dear to us. Yeah. You know, people lost their homes. Yeah. yeah. So small businesses got shut down. There isn't yeah. one person. There isn't one person that hasn't been touched by this yeah. in some way. So when I say that we were robbed, yeah. I'm talking in the rawest and most deep sense of of that word lives were taken like yeah, like yeah. careers my personal career was completely derailed yeah, yeah. the last year and a half be, because of this it's it's been very very hard you yeah, know and midsummer of course 
we put that on the back burner. But Midsummer is a business, just yeah. like anybody else's business. So yeah. we've had to struggle with, well, how do we keep the brand alive? And it, it's been dormant now for two years now. How do we keep that on everybody's mind yeah. and, and all that? And so even that aside, but personally, like Gary, Gary Baker and, and, and the Call Brothers, his business, his business isn't just making a pretty stage for Midsummer every year. It's doing that for hundreds of shows all over the place right. all year long with his AV company. Yeah. Yeah. And they had crickets. Nobody, yeah. I mean, everybody canceled their shows for the last year. Yeah. So it's been devastating on so many levels, just, just business-wise and financially. Yeah. And then there's that whole other mental wellness. I mean, I struggle. I struggle really hard, and I'm very public about it. Yeah. With with major anxiety and depression issues, yeah. and so for somebody that is used to working with teams or whatever, being literally in my living room by myself, well, Jawa is there, yeah. you know. When when Nova's not there with me, yeah. you know, just to not even work, but just to sit and eat food and play PlayStation like day <laughs> right? in and day out, yeah. it gets old. Of course, yeah. it gets old. We get fat, and you know what? And it just really really leans on your mental well-being yeah and so just like the past couple of weeks now being able to do things without the mask yeah, yeah nice. has been unbelievable we, we just got back nova and i just went to the opening of resorts world in las vegas and just being able to go to vegas again and see and do things without the mask yeah yeah oh my god it it, it feels like uh, like we said, we, we're getting our life back again. Yeah, especially because I know, uh, and you know, I, I follow you on Instagram, and I know Vegas is like your go-to getaway. It is. Yes, and, and I, I've been wanting to go since I turned 21, oh. and I gotta go. Uh, I haven't been since I was like 12. I couldn't do anything, but now that I'm 21, I could do more. Um, but yeah, I will I, give you copious notes. Yeah, of things to do. I will accept them because Rick West go. is like one of the Vegas <laughs> experts, man. I'm the Vegas cheerleader. Yeah, I'm the ambassador of Sin City. Yeah, yeah. Um, the ambassador of Sin yeah. City. That's that, but title. yeah, I know, I know how much you love Vegas. So I know in the beginning of the pandemic, it might have been, it was probably really hard for you to like when you wanted to go out there. It's just we went, we went several times. She's sitting right off camera here, folks. But <laughs> what, like three times, four times, we went during the pandemic yeah. we went right before everything closed down right and then we went in like that really weird period where masks weren't mandatory in, in vegas right but we went and we were like the only ones like wearing masks and it was yeah. really like kind of skin crawly yeah um but like like i said we went this week and we just got back and i would say probably 10 15 maybe 20 percent of the people wearing masks yeah. But for the most part, it pretty much feels like, like no, Vegas, Vegas is back. Again, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, because I, I remember in the start of the pandemic, you just saw mm -hmm. Vegas. It was dead. Yeah, it was oh, a ghost. Horrifying. Yeah. yeah, horrifying. We we. I mean, I, I kicking myself that I didn't do it now, but we we've known people that got in their cars and literally drove just to take pictures of how it looked like ghost town. Right. It was just empty. It was, right. Yeah. And so... It looked like actually that from that movie, Army of the Dead. It did. <laughs> it did. Yeah. And it was crazy because you got to realize when, when these places open, they open forever. Like, yeah. we walked into Resorts World literally with the first hundred people from the public to walk in. Right. And I said to her, I said, this is amazing. If you stop and look at this thing, this is now a living, breathing thing that will never close well, again. Yeah. yeah. And so when it came time to shut down Bellagio, MGM, all these places, they had to put boards from Home Depot like up over the doors, like 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 yeah. Katrina. You know, you see the Katrina. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. or anytime there's there's uh, you know the hurricanes and, and tornadoes, they, it's like they just jury rigged all these doors with boards and stuff because they don't have big locking mechanisms. Yeah. They don't have the bars that come down over It's the, literally the city that never sleeps. Because it never, never closes. Yeah. yeah. So when it was like, well, you're closing, everybody was kind of like, how do we do well, this? Well, shit, yeah. how do we do that? Yeah. yeah. There's, there is no, and then. There, it's like there's the first no, time in a very long time that we actually had to crazy. close. It's yeah. yeah. So hindsight, I, I really wish we had made the trip out there yeah. to take, you know, really cool but sad, obviously, pictures yeah. of the strip just completely void. Well, because it's history. Of, of, it's of history tourists. now. You know what I mean? Yeah, like it's it gonna, is. It's going down in the history books. Oh. That's, that's no. A hundred years no, from now, they'll be talking about that. Yeah, like that's yeah. no questions asked. Like, where were you when the big pandemic? Of happened? course. You know what I mean? Like, of course. And and to see pictures of, you know, for I mean, 
very little positive happened from it. Obviously, yeah. with with very you know, few silver linings. There yeah. was, of course, there was a there was a little bit of a time where the the air was not as polluted, and it was yeah. a lot more cleaner and whatnot. And um, it does feel like Mother Nature hit the pause button. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I'll and give it that. I will say this though. I mean, I think one positive that I did take out of the pandemic was getting closer with my dad. Yes. Um, yeah. Absolutely. That, that was the biggest positive I could take out of COVID because, um, you know, you, with everything happening, you keep your groups tight. Yeah. Obviously, because you don't want to spread. You want to. You want to do your part and whatnot. Yep. So I, I had more opportunities to uh, binge watch stuff with my dad that I didn't get to do because I always did night support things yep. on the weekends and whatnot. Yep. I got to go visit my mom more, and I mean, she only lives right down the street, but you know, with her insane work schedules and stuff, I got to go visit her more and and spend time with them. So. It, it was a blessing to, to really be with family more. Yeah. Um, and that's the, that's the positive I hope a lot of people took out of it. You know, if you know you had family and you guys were really tight with each other and everything, um, to just to spend the time because, you know, you're only, you only get to be with everyone for so long and then your time yeah. is up on this world. But I think it was, it was, it was a, a mental recalibration. It yeah. was. Right. And it really snapped into focus the things that are very important. Yeah. And, and maybe... The things also that don't need to be that important, yeah. exactly. right? And so you long for your inner circle of friends. Right. Yeah. You long to be able to hug certain people. Yes. You you long to just be able to go over to a best friend's house and just have a drink and sit and just bullshit and laugh. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's not about oh man we didn't get to go out and go to Disneyland today or for for the third time this weekend right you know it it, it, it it showed us that we we didn't need to have annual passes to be happy yeah. going to parks or whatever right it's really about those that are close to you being closer to you exactly and and really showed you about your relationships and and your how you're connected to to your inner circle and it just i think it was very eye-opening right you know we've we've made our own major decisions of, of what we want out of life going forward from this mm -hmm. and um, you know there are big changes in our future coming coming from this and um, you know it's it's one of those things that nobody comes out the other end of this the same person that we were going into this right for better or worse because I think that it's it's brought good out but it's brought a lot of bad out yeah, yeah, also absolutely. in people yeah. and at a, at a time when the country is it couldn't have been this couldn't have been worse timing you know, the country's got so many social issues right now. It does. To have COVID now on top of everything else was just like, you know, all we needed was the 9.0 earthquake. That was the only thing missing from the mix. I was like, you know. Killer beast, though. Killer yeah, you got the, the killer, the giant the killer. Wasp. Wasp, yes. Yeah. All that shit. But, it, you know, it just was culmination of just so much ugly. Yeah. Right? Yeah, a lot that, of that stuff. We, nobody, nobody is going to go forward the same as they were a year and a half ago yeah very rough year man yeah and it was it was it was just sad to see things emptied and things closed down especially you know i i really felt bad for a lot of the small businesses too of course because yeah. a lot of those people who rent out spots especially like in los angeles you know everywhere yeah yeah, yeah. And, everywhere and and the biggest yeah and, and uh, the reason why i bring up los angeles because you'll see a lot of them especially there but yeah everywhere in the world um dude there's not one we noticed this there isn't one business like anywhere yeah we noticed it in vegas we noticed it here on the way to see you guys today right like every business has help wanted signs now yeah. hiring signs up because they yeah. can't get their workforce up fast yeah. enough and and there were so many places in vegas that we drove by this week that didn't survive COVID, and they're just empty strip malls empty well, storefronts it's funny you bring that Very up because one of my favorite shows to watch is uh, bar rescue Okay, yeah. With John Taffer, and yeah. he's doing this whole season. I love how soft-spoken he is. Yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. You, know, you know why I had to chew you out, right? Oh, my God. Um, but this season he's focusing on, he's from Vegas, so he's yeah. focusing on saving all the bars in Vegas because, yeah. you know, that's his hometown. And, you know, the bar industry, too, uh, is a big business that suffered. Yeah. Obviously. Oh, God, of course. Yeah. I mean, all the bars, they were closed for almost the entire time. Yep. And then it wasn't until about towards the end, you know, more the end of when things got better that they started doing outdoor and then now they're finally back to full capacity yeah. like i went to a bar the other the other week and it just it felt great you know i mean 
it was it felt a nice, normal. It felt normal. It yeah. felt normal. People were, you know, there, it was a pool. There was a, it's a pool hall, so people were playing pool, having yep. fun, having their drinks, having the food, and it, it just felt normal. Yeah, felt good again, and, yep. and just to see. I hate to see anyone lose a job. I hate to see anyone lose their business, man. It, it does suck, man. Devastating. And, and that's why I always going back to the event for Awaken the Spirits. A lot yep. of those vendors do this full time. Whether oh, they, yeah. Whether they sell it on Etsy, eBay, whatever it may be. Yep. This is their full time yep. job. Yep. So that's why I can't advocate any more to just please support them in any way possible. Yeah. Um, absolutely. Because they they do a lot of great work. A lot of they sell a lot of amazing stuff. And if, especially if you're a horror collector, this is this is the convention to go to, man, because you'll get a lot of stuff. I mean, I'm a, lot a big of fun stuff. You can see in this in this, I'm a big Funko collector, so you know that's that's my thing right yeah, there. Yeah, a lot I of love, fun stuff. Yeah, I love Funko. I got my horror ones there. I got them all. Video games, you know, comic books, Star Wars. I'm, I love Funko. So I mean, please go support all the small small businesses vendors that are going to be at uh, Awaken the Spirits because yeah. uh, just take in mind a lot of these people. Some of them, this is their full-time job, and this yeah. is how they get around, and we need to support them any way possible. And up and beyond, when you're shopping and you see your favorite vendor again, yeah, tell them that you're happy to see them. Yeah. yeah. It's tell a, them that you're happy to see them and have them back. It's probably been two years since you've seen them last, the last Dude, time they did Midsummer. you know what I mean? It's people probably the last time you saw them. been hurting so bad. I think just, just, you know, that extra little, you know, I'm glad, I'm glad to see you back. We'll now, probably go a long way with people. I know he's right? got two things he wants to talk about before yeah. we, before we get to that. Have you and, and this really doesn't have anything to you know do with Midsummer, but I wanted sure. to get your thoughts. Have you heard of uh, Horville Halloween Depot? I think I have heard about it because we have friends that I think build stuff for it. Okay, and create things there. Yeah, for they. It. So it's a smaller in Southgate. It's a little warehouse. Yes. Um, I got to give a, a big shout out to them because this was giving us kind of that fix of having the event and I wanted to know if you've been to it yet because I would like to hear your thoughts about it but if you ever yeah. get a chance it's a very small location but it's a yeah. fun time uh, you probably will see a lot of the vendors that, that vend at Midsummer Scream events um, but they, they're really up and coming man and I, it'd be awesome to see them down the line probably work with you guys or just something but I just wanted to hear your thoughts about it because it yeah. was kind of like the small Midsummer, uh, the way that's how I looked at yeah. it was a small little midsummer before we got a, a midsummer. So those, the, them's my thoughts. I haven't. Yeah. Because I've been, we've been locked away, you yeah. know, playing it safe and just being yeah. on lockdown. So if you get a chance when yeah. they when they do they do it about once a month for a weekend now they they started extending it for two days. Okay. Um, they recently just had Art the Clown there from Terrifier. Okay. Yeah. Um, and they they're working on getting special guests. They're actually going to be doing an event, and I think you'll get a kick out of this. They're going to be going to Vegas. Okay. Um, I don't know. This is the first time they're traveling with it. They just took a poll recently to see if they were to go to Vegas, if people would follow. And they just announced yesterday that they'll be going to Vegas pretty soon. Great. Um, so give them a check out, man. Yeah, um, because absolutely. Because they, they do good work. And uh, I saw a lot of similarities to Midsummer, so they probably got a lot of inspiration from you guys, too. That's great. That's yeah. cool. That's but fun. Season screamings. Yeah, yeah. So obviously, we know that's still in the works about yeah. six months from now. Well, a little less than six months now. So. Can you provide us like a brief synopsis of like what we can expect from that event? Wow, just you know, it, it's it's like the nightmare before Christmas. It's the two yeah. holidays collide, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, who doesn't like the dark, dark Christmas market, right? That's yeah. a great. So, season screamings. Obviously, we had done that for a couple of years, and we did that in partnership with Sweet Hollywood. Okay. At the at the Hollywood and Highland complex, and they had a big candy store there, and we just kind of put vendors in between like the candy and all that stuff and it was we called it a day you know yeah. it was the type of thing but it was very popular yeah right and it was very apparent to us that we had rapidly outgrown sweet hollywood right and they were fun they were fun part but number one covid did a number on everybody but number two we knew that they were not renewing their lease again there so the writing was on the wall that we had to find another venue for season screamings. Right. And so David and I, we we had kind of talked about, well, you know, it should be a bigger venue. It should be a bigger event. And the idea was, it's such a crazy time of year, it's nice just to kind of have the venue already there and we just kind of plug and play some of our, you know, the vendors that we work with and right. and, and call it a day. But yeah, the right and, and the team agreed and I think the team got excited about it and then, you know, 
it kind of became a necessity where we're like, well, Jesus, we can't do Midsummer Scream. We can't do it again. So what, what are we going to do? Right. And I said, well, opportunity isn't knocking. It's kicking down the damn door. Yeah. I said, we really need to embiggen this and, and make this like a Christmas version of, of a mini Midsummer Scream type event. And the team was, of course, all in. And really, that's that's where we're going to have we're going to have hundreds of vendors. We're going to have the Hall of Yuletide spirits with that. haunts and displays that's awesome. in there. Um, we're going to have. Uh, I'm sure we will have some sort of presentation area. Um, we're going to have a few different little breakout areas that we haven't really announced. You know what we're going to do. Yeah, yeah. Because in large, we are still programming. Yeah, right. Of we're still programming this thing. Still in the pre-production. Oh kind God, of, yeah. of course. Yeah, yeah. Right. So we're still we, we know things that we kind of want to do. Yeah. But we have to lock things in. Yeah. And uh, so, again, the footstep, the the footprint for that, is small. I mean, it's like one third the size of Midsummer Screen. Right. Just yeah. because Pasadena is a smaller yeah. venue. Yeah. So everything that that will happen for that show and for Awaken the Spirits again fits in about the Hall of Shadows, right? It, it, yeah. it, it could be neatly tucked away in the, in the Hall of Shadows. Especially a, a good event weekend before Christmas. Yeah. Perfect timing. Yeah, so the, the, the thing was, there was an interesting discussion that, that David and I had. His major concern from a business point of view was, well, there's going to be a lot of people for the first time that are going to be able to travel. Yeah. And so what does that mean for an event being held the weekend before Christmas? And I said, well, in my opinion, what it means to me is you've had an entire country on lockdown for the past year. If people are traveling for Christmas, they're coming to the relatives in L.A. Yes. They're not staying in Iowa. Sorry, Iowa. Yeah. But they're not staying, you know, on the farm in Iowa yeah, uh, yeah. anymore. They're ready to travel for Christmas. Yes. So I told him I think that it would be just hands down just a fantastic event. Oh yeah, and and he agreed. But of course, there there's always that question mark. But of course, the minute we announced it, it broke up. broke the internet. Oh, so yeah. I mean, we are very confident that that'll be a well, really wonderful event as well. What helped it break the internet too was the fact that uh, it's been so long since we had heard from Midsummer. Yeah, of course. And 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 just the fact that they were like, you guys were like, we're gonna do a Christmas event. Yeah. Uh, and it's gonna be a it's gonna be a fun time. You can expect a lot of the things you see at Midsummer, but let's yeah. just Christmas it up a little bit. Yep. The, the other thing that's good about it, uh, it's also the week before Christmas, so you can get your Christmas shopping on at the there event. There you go. Yeah. Or, hey, dude, early Christmas present yeah. would be tickets for that event. There it is. Yeah. Yeah. When they go on sale, and they will go on sale soon. Yes. For that, and, uh, you know, follow us on our socials, and you'll know exactly when the tickets exactly. are going on sale yeah. and where you can get them. Uh, but yeah, I mean that that's a great gift too. Get yeah. somebody a pass. Get a nice to, weekend to ticket. Stream. Yep. Yeah. To season I streaming. can't highly suggest it. You get. Hopefully, we're gonna get a VIP. I hope so. Um, but if they do release a VIP, I can't highly suggest it even more because it's the that's how you do it. It's just how you do it. You're gonna go in style. You're gonna go in yeah. style. That's but it. I, I I am so stoked for this. I'm glad you guys are doing something Christmas time because I feel like yeah. there's always that dull time after haunt season where it's like November is missing it. December is missing it even more. So like December time, you know, you got the Christmas going, but then a lot of people who are haunt horror fans are always, you know, watching movies like Krampus, Night Before Christmas, yep. you know, and so it's a good little holiday haunt to keep the Halloween spirit going. In yeah, Christmas. to me, it's a no-brainer. Yeah. I mean, in recent years, and I think you know, in large, I, I mean, obviously, Halloween and Christmas, we found out through Nightmare Before Christmas. Yep. That goes together like peanut butter and chocolate, right? Yeah. That, that's like perfect. Yep. And then you, you do have things like Krampus. Um, that helped. And and you just had a lot of events like Dark Christmas at Horror Nights. Yeah. Really kind of push that across the line where yeah. everybody's like, dude, I'm all in for scary Christmas stuff. Oh, now, yeah. Right? Yeah. So those things have helped. And yeah, I mean, just to us, it's like a no-brainer. We love Christmas true too. I mean, like Gary Baker's house at Christmas time looks like the Main Street Electrical Parade exploded all over it. I mean, <laughs> it looks like the freaking North Pole at Gary's house. And you know, David and Claire, they have parties and and, and they make cookies and things nonstop for people. Right. And and I know that Claire, they, they they have a cookie 
uh, cookie decorating day where they donate then the, the cookies and, and it, they do delicious. really good stuff. And we will jump in the in the in the car and I'll, I'm like I'm like Clark Griswold. I'll put the music on and yeah. we get the hot cocoa in the car and we jump in the in the midsummer yeah. mobile and we just go cruising yeah. with the windows down, the heater on, and the Christmas jams really loud. Yeah. And we just go up and down looking at people's Christmas lights and Christmas displays. Hey man, I love that too. Especially there's neighborhoods that will all work together. To oh yeah, do that whole, and of it's course. Beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. Beautiful. So we do. We go all over Southern California to look at the Christmas yeah. lights too. So just like haunt season, yeah. when you do the haunts, you know. So you do we the get Christmas a little lights. bit of. So having season screamings, perfect. that's a little taste of both, and it just is a perfect, you know, coming together of the two holidays. And it gets the it gives the fans their haunt fix again. After, you bet. Yeah, you know. So you know you have, you know, your love for Christmas, your love for Halloween into one. Especially because the community, I know a lot of the community loves Nightmare Before Christmas. So, of course. You know, that's such, such a big film in the community. One of my so, favorite movies. Yeah, great freaking movie. Yeah. I love it. Um, I think we, every now and then, would do a live stream on the channel during Christmas, either that or Krampus. Yeah. Um, one or the other, but it's it's a fun time. And, you know, it also gives you the, especially now that Disneyland's back open. Yeah. You know, a lot of people like to go do Haunted Mansion Holiday, too. Of course. For their, their Halloween, you know, Christmas fix. So, it, it yeah. just, uh, it's a good time. It really is. Yeah, well, what's nice also with season screamings is it gives the community that fix yeah and it really it really taxis everyone then onto the runway yeah ready for takeoff for midsummer you yeah. know a few months later yeah so um it, it's 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 gonna be fun midsummer of, screen yeah speed of taxi yeah yeah you said it's seven years in the making yeah the five year anniversary yeah what can we expect boy you know always the hype is going to be bigger and better, you know, and yeah. of course that's what we do, right? Um, it'll definitely, well, we've added the third day, so it's it's the Friday through Sunday. Yeah. yeah. So we do have a different, uh, you know, we have an extra time. Um, we're going to bring over, we're carrying over some of the best components and ideas that we had from Midsummer two years ago right. to Midsummer next year. Yeah. God, it gets crazy. It's like, the matrix you know yeah but uh so we're bringing some of the best components that were really exciting ideas to midsummer 22 and the silver lining in this case is we've had extra extra time to really percolate on some things and say you know this would be really cool and yeah. we have we've had extra time now to really work on bringing some extra special cool things to midsummer but you know i i think it's just the the general people are going to be so ready for Midsummer Scream yeah. that again the excitement and the pure electricity comes from you guys. Oh yeah, we. It's gonna come from you guys coming through the door for the first time in in you know three <laughs> years. It'll be you know. What was it? To I Long think Beach. It was, uh, it was Midsummer of last year, uh, maybe a little later, August, maybe September. I went down to Long Beach on a date. Yeah. We ate at the islands across the street. Sure. And uh, I just, I remember looking over at the, the convention center, I'm just like, it's just not the same. Yeah. It's not, I mean, I, I, I just, you know, you, you think of that weekend and it's just filled with people, but when I looked over at it, it was just empty and I was just, I was a little sad. I really yeah, was. Course. You know, and then I, then we took a walk down to like the shore right there and right across from the harbor you could see Queen Mary. And you know, thinking of all the stuff that's been going through in the last year. Yeah. Just kind of makes me sad too, you know, with the you know, dark harbor and everything. You know, you start hearing things, rumors and whatnot, but it's not official until someone says something. But, you know, it's just, it's sad looking out all that empty, you know, because yeah. it, it's events like Midsummer Scream that bring life yeah. to that place and the good times, the memories. I mean, I, I, I could tell you right now, I looked at the convention center, I just was thinking 2019 Midsummer Scream had yeah. a freaking blast. Yeah. And I can't wait to go back and do it again. Well, we're going to bring it as hard as we have ever brought anything. I'm so and, excited. Uh, you know, we've certainly waited for that for a long yeah. time, and we know that you guys have. And I think that everybody, whether you're a vendor, whether you're a white bat, whether you're a fan coming to enjoy the weekend, yeah. whether you're a haunter ready to build something to show off, yeah. I think everybody is just going to be just 200%. Oh, yeah. yeah. The, the energy is going to be there. And I think that you're really going to feel that, man. I, I think I, you're I think even going to, honestly, you're going to feel it when you go to Awaken the Spirits. Oh, yeah. You're going to feel that. But then when you go... So... By the way, too, Midsummer Scream will be returning to Long Beach Convention yes. Center. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, uh, in about a year's time, actually, uh, Midsummer Scream 2022. Are yeah. you guys still honoring tickets that were bought for 2020? Yeah. So, anybody that bought tickets for 20, 
Those rolled over to 21. Mm -hmm. Now they're rolling over to 22. Those roll over now to 22. <laughs> and um, I may be preempting one of your questions or whatever, but we've had a lot of people say, well, can we use our tickets for Awaken the Spirits or Season Screamings? The answer is no. Right. For multiple reasons. Number one, different venue, different ticketing service. Yeah. So they don't even cross over. Yeah. So that's that's the no from the business, the technical end of it. Right. Other than that, the tickets for Midsummer Scream are more expensive and will be more expensive and more valuable to you right. than Awaken the Spirits or Season Screamings. Right. So if you can hang on to them, because tickets will go up for Midsummer Scream, right. you know, next year. To hang on to those tickets is going to be benefiting you guys it's going to be worth in it. the long run, yes. right? Yeah. Now, again, we, we do understand that times are really hard and people just really had a tough time. So we've been helping anybody that does need, you know, refunds. Yeah. The resources are there to do that. Yes. But God, if you can hang on to them. It's going to be worth the wait. Just hang on to them. It's right? really going to be worth the wait. I would do that. But so that's that's the long and the short of it uh, right. about. So so. If you have tickets, yes, they roll over to Midsummer Scream, not to the next two events because different venue, different ticketing system. Right. Um, I feel like we've covered a ton today, man. Awesome. I got so much information and I Good. am so stoked. Uh, we got July 10th and the 11th. You got the film festival going yeah. on. If tickets are still available, go ahead and purchase your tickets now. It's going to be a fun time. Grab your popcorn, grab your snacks, drinks. You're in for a weekend filled of great horror films. Um, presented by Midsummer Scream and the Frida Cinema. Yeah. That's going to be awesome. Um, Awaken the Spirits, August uh, 14th and 15th. 14th and 15th, yep. It's going to be a great weekend. Uh, that's going to be your... You, it's going to be just fun to get back and, and do normal things again. It'll be fun. Bring your money, because there's going to be a lot of great vendors there. There's going to be a, a lot of good uh, presentations there that we are all looking forward to. And you might even run into Rick West himself there. Hey, say hi. Don't be shy. Always love to say hi to people. Fist bumps and courage. Fist bumps. And, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's going to be a great time. Yeah. Uh, We're excited about it. Season screamings, the 17th through the what, 18th, 19th? Yes. Yes. It's the weekend before Christmas. The that's weekend, all you got to remember. The weekend before, the weekend before Christmas. The before Christmas. So if you want to get uh, tickets for your loved one when they go on sale, yeah. uh, it'd be a great Christmas gift, early Christmas gift for people. Also, yeah. if you guys are going to show up, be some goods for some Christmas shopping, too. Absolutely, you know? man. Um, and then a year from now, Midsummer Screams fifth anniversary finally finally <laughs> it's been too long returning to long beach convention center yeah we cannot wait we are absolutely thrilled so much information guys we hope you guys uh, got so much information as well um rick again thank you for taking the time coming all the way out here doing this it oh, feels man it's my feels pleasure. good to be back in person it's my pleasure and yes. i thank you guys for doing what you do right absolutely for doing what you do and uh no it, it's just being able to do something that feels normal again is great well, and, and we don't take these things for granted now right yes, no yeah. not one bit this has taught us you just don't take things for granted i was excited for this all week honestly this that's was, great this was the, the i was like we're doing something in person sammy's in town awesome. like it, the timing was so perfect for this podcast awesome. um but rick we actually really owe it all to you with with tpa and whatnot because oh, man. you you really set the path for for all this to really happen um, for multiple channels, not just ours, you are the reason why people do walkthroughs, why people do you know coverage at you know events for smaller channels and stuff. You really set the well, thank you that, that bar, and, and we're just trying to keep it going and and and, and keep it honored, you know. So thank you, I appreciate best that. Best we can, man. We, we we love what you did, and we love what you continue to do. So you know, Knights of Horror will always support anything Midsummer Scream does. Thank you. We we love the events. We feel at home at the events. And it's just fun to be around everyone. Well, it's been a crazy ride, you know. TPA was a long time ago, yeah. and uh, it was a huge part of my life for 24 years. Right. You know, and, and, and really was able to witness the growth and evolution of the haunt community here in Southern California and do what I could to bring people together to play nice and yeah. to really to be a community. Yeah. And... Um, did a lot of special things over over a couple decades and that opened the door to become part of you know what we do now with midsummer screen yeah and so it's it's been a crazy journey but it's great because whether you've been there the whole time 
whether you're old like I am and have been there since it was black and white days, yeah. <laughs> or are relatively new to it and, and understand you know where it's been and where it's gonna go, it's just we're we're on the journey together. Yes. And that's Couldn't that's what more. it's all about, man, is just Couldn't being agree. on this journey together. Yeah, and, and so I thank you guys. For no, that. and we also thank you and your team for, for putting together Awaken the Spirits. You know, I, I know it's only so many months away and or so crazy. many weeks and days yeah. away. And, <laughs> yeah, and, crazy. And and, and, and and I know hot season is gonna be seriously weeks away from that, but yeah. it, it, it's it, it means the world, and I could probably speak on behalf of the whole community mm, that it, it means the world that we, we are still getting something from Midsummer this yeah. this, this, this summer because that's that's I think what a lot of people look forward to is going to a Midsummer yeah. event and hearing all the announcements, buying stuff, seeing all the shows, going through all the home haunts, seeing um, their friends, seeing their yeah. friends. Dude, yeah, the community like, hasn't been together. I mean, seeing the collaborations. Faces. Yeah, yeah, I mean, right. Like I told you, <laughs> when we went to Midsummer 2019, we 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 set up in corners to do podcasts, interviews. It was it was a fun time. Yeah. And I, I miss doing all that. So you can expect probably another 20 to 30 video a week from the Knights of Horror yeah, with great. with uh, Awaken the Spirits mm -hmm. content. That's it's going to be a lot of fun stuff. So. Well, we, we appreciate that. And, you know, um, I'm here with you guys. But really, I am the mouthpiece for Claire Dunlap, yeah. Gary Baker, David Markland. Each of us does our own thing to make these events happen yeah and i think that it, it's one of those one of those situations where it, it it's just not the same if if we all go out and do our own little things right yeah. and so that's why like bands like you two haven't broken up because yeah. they know that that's yeah. you know that's the band you got to keep the band together yeah. yeah and so you know claire does a lot of the backline work that like frankly nobody has the patience to do or would want to do yeah. and like without her right we wouldn't have an event yeah. because she spends uncounted hours in the deep trenches making deals setting dates up getting things going that just i frankly wouldn't even think of right. to do and then you have david who oversees and approves everything right and he maintains a the way that he knows vendors and maintains a relationship with hundreds of vendors, right. like I got trouble doing that with like a dozen haunters, right? <laughs> I'm like, wait, shit, who's coming back? Yeah. You know, so how David does all that, right. you know, with the vendors, yeah. and then stays on top of everything else, yeah, is unbelievable. I, yeah. And then Gary Baker and his dedication to the community and and to really bringing, no matter where our venue is. But bringing a a stage that people go wow when they walk into the room, yeah. and also our partners when they come to do presentations go oh wow this is really nice, yeah. you know, that's Gary right. and, and and the Call Brothers, and so everybody pours their heart and soul into this in their own way, and I think it's really the the culmination of that, that's the alchemy right. that from the business end of it makes Midsummer so successful exactly is that you have four very different personalities coming together to create something that is just when we release it and it's out there in the wild and you guys are come streaming through the doors then it shifts gears and it becomes your show right and you guys are are the lifeblood for that but for the year year and a half or two months that it takes <laughs> to create an event really it's us and then of course our core team yeah. right you know that, that supports us in, in in the ways behind the scenes. With all that, without all that coming together and working, it just it just doesn't happen. It makes dude. one of these right here. That's right. <laughs> we make a beautiful monster, yeah. right? And so that uh, that's really it in 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 a, in a, in a nutshell is. Right. I think the magic is the team. We're we're, co we're we're committed to the community and we're comfortable enough with each other, where we can pick through. The things and pick out the nuggets that are really good and and make that happen yeah and then you guys the best community in the world coming in to support that and really celebrating it and, and giving it life breathing life into it that that's the spirit of midsummer screen this is why i think and i'm gonna go out and say this and i'm not even afraid to say it this is why i think i like your guys's conventions more than anything because you guys you worry more about the fans than you do the money there we it's appreciate all, that. It's all about the fans, and you don't see that a lot with conventions. They they really in it for the cash, and, and it's not 
F the fans, but you know, I, there's a lot more fan support with Midsummer Scream than we I've seen at any convention ever, and that's why I keep coming back every year. We are very, very cognizant and keenly aware that we could put on the best show in the world, but if nobody shows up, it isn't anything. Yeah. You know? I was going to say it ain't shit, but you know, <laughs> that's going to end up the quote, but you know, but really, it doesn't amount to anything. Right. right? Without the support, the support of the community. Yeah, of course. So you guys with the, are with are, affordable ticket pricing and and just everything. It, it really, I mean, I. This is why I continue to support Midsummer. Thank you. It's because of you know the the fan loyalty. You know, you guys were all fans at one point too. Oh yeah. And still are fans. Yeah. And you guys put on the show that you know the fans. Yeah, we want to go. We want to yeah, go see. You want to go right? see. So if you know you yes. guys want to go see it, you know we want to go see it. Yes. And we continue to come by every year. We look forward to seeing who announces what. We look forward to seeing special guests who's going to be there. We look forward to shopping at all the vendors and even bumping into friends. So Absolutely. We, we appreciate you and your team for tirelessly, especially this probably last couple months, um, mm. putting on the best fucking show in the world. Awesome, man. Well, we can't wait to welcome everybody back. And, uh, again, thank you so much for the support. It's been a really long year and a half. And... Uh, we're ready to come out of the crypts and crawl out of the graves. Clock is ticking, awaken the spirits, only a month and a half away. A month and a half, just to hear that. It's insane. Uh, the film festival in a few weeks. Get your tickets for that. Uh, season screamings in a few months. Yeah. Coming soon. And the big one to uh, get us there. About a year away. Midsummer About Scream. About a year away from Midsummer. Fifth anniversary, man. We cannot wait. We cannot wait to go back in those doors uh, it's gonna be awesome well rick again thank you so much for your time for driving out man we appreciate you uh coming out here talk, giving us all the information we can get out of you and, and we we cannot wait uh sammy any last remarks you got yeah i know well obviously thanks rick uh of course. Lindy, that's your time Lindy, is your guy that was a long that was a long drive <laughs> yeah. that's fine um <laughs> uh, um thank you all for watching um yeah. don't forget to go follow midsummer screen on all social media all so socials. you can get up to date on you know every announcement leading up to Awaken the Spirits, yeah. um, Season Screamings, and uh, Midsummer Scream 2022, the fifth anniversary. Yeah. Don't forget to follow us also on uh, Twitter at Knights of War, and that's Instagram at The Knights of War. Hasn't lost um, his touch. We'll, so proud of this kid. So to uh, keep y'all <laughs> updated. Also, go ahead and leave a comment below, like the video, and subscribe, and we'll see y'all in the next video. See you guys later. You guys have a good one. Be safe. Peace. You're moving into a